I'm going to talk about algae and how we are using algae to capture CO2 and clean up water and uh, as a source of renewable source of uh, uh, energy and fuel. Uh, when, whenever we start doing research, uh, you have to ask yourself a question why I'm doing it. I know the first answer is I got funded to do it, so which is great, which, which is awesome, you know, but uh, because you do need funding to get the things going. But the answer is how does it connect to society? I mean, if you want to keep your people, your group moving, you want to answer that question. And luckily for us, we think that, uh, like if you look at the challenges which we face today, I mean, you have malnutrition, hunger, you have uh, global warming, uh, scarcity of drinking water or uh, usable water. In fact, you know, we believe at least that water is going to be a bigger problem than fuel and sooner. Uh, and also, obviously, you guys have read about and heard about oil peak and energy crisis. And um, then you have all this, uh, you get some, uh, you know, bio sources like corn and uh, uh, soybean, and then you, the fight between food and fuel. So all these different challenges we face, and we think that algae uh, is not the solution, but it could be a part of a solution because algae does some amazing things. Algae is full of proteins, so it could be good for, as a food supplement. Uh, obviously, global warming, you know, you, it captures CO2, and, and algae also, if used good, I mean, and we'll, we'll come back to that later, there's good algae and there's a bad algae. And uh, so in this particular case, uh, Algae can also be used to uh, clean water, and uh, algae is also a source, a renewable source, a sustainable source for generating oil and uh, having a biomass to energy system, uh, to run those things. And now you say is, wow, and how, how does algae do all this? Or this guy is just, you know, trying to uh, boost up his own uh, research. Uh, the answer is both. Um, uh, I like to feel good about myself, uh, and, uh, but the thing is algae is really a very unique and uh, 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 photosynthetic organism. Uh, in fact, uh, it's every other breath you take, it's not quite has a ring of police song, but you know, it's because of algae, okay? So you do have to thank algae for that because this is one of the biggest photosynthetic uh, organisms which produce, takes out CO2 and produces oxygen. So algae is, it, it could be single cell, unicellular, or multicellular uh, uh, organisms. They are everywhere. They are in the boiling water, in the Yellowstones, if you go in the uh, Yellowstone Park, in the geysers, you will see hot uh, temperature algae. Uh, if you go to uh, the, uh, Antarctica, you will see algae still there, uh, which is the cold algae, and it's everywhere. If, if you look at it, this algae is, uh, the real source of the fuel, you know, of course, like hundreds and thousands of years ago. So algae does have all these properties which we can, um, uh, you know, explore and then apply to help solve all these challenges. So it's not a solution just for one part of the world or it could be made into a solution for different problems in different parts of the world. So good thing about that is in this particular case, you know, you have a much bigger market, so that's always good. Okay, so it, it's everywhere. Uh, it, it's in, uh, uh, in the Arctic circles, uh, it's in the ocean, it's in your air, it's on all those pristine lakes, in the rocks, on the trees. And this is my favorite example is it's like if you have the sloth, you will see on the back of it algae growing. The algae composition is what? makes it really special. Uh, there are thousands of different types of algae. But the three main things that algae has is it has proteins, it has carbohydrates, uh, you know, and it has lipids. We are thinking a little bit, not doing the things just in the lab. So if it has to be a solution to the different problems which we are facing, that means it has to be industrialized. In the sense is that if, if we have, you know, about 8 billion people now in, in the world and we have huge energy demand, and if we have to supply all these things, all these uh, uh, demands and uh, feed people, we have to grow algae at larger scale. And luckily I happen to be a chemical engineer, so that was pretty convenient. Uh, 
So, you know, scaling up is that's what we do. And so our focus has been to taking the algae to the next level. Uh, so our focus has been is that let's have a really cheap but really energy efficient closed systems for algae so that we can control it. We can run it in hot climates. We can run it in cold climates. Cold climates is very important because most of the CO2 sources are in uh, colder climates. So we are looking over here is the overall process of algae. So we are looking at the nutrients it required, feeding CO2 directly from the stacks of the um, industries. That's what we have done. So our focus was, as I said, was to have the system which can be operated with a little capital cost, but can be operated in any region. So our main focus has been on the biophotoreactor development, uh, and we have done a lot of work with that, and then how to take algae out of uh, out of water because it's, you know, when you have, even if it looks like a really thick algae, it's very little algae in there really. Uh, so you had to take a lot of the water out and then how to process it. Uh, you know, from once, once you process it, you can make electricity, but, or you can have proteins, or you can have oil. So you can have, so we are sort of focusing on all those areas. Uh, so our main aim was what we, how our program got started was CO2 capture. So our idea was to generate as much algae as possible with as little land and, uh, as, and as little input, you know, from commercial industry like fertilizers. And because the whole idea about you guys must have heard about food versus fuel, so we wanted to not use the land, uh, you know, to reduce the food production. But so these all reactors were designed for that. And uh, so we were able to figure out the system which we think would work. And uh, so this photoreactor design was the main key and we figured out it was the delivery of light which was the most important thing uh, to keep in mind. Now, the second part is uh, uh, wastewater. Now, the wastewater is a huge problem uh, because we, you want to reuse the water um, as many times as possible because water is a very scarce source uh, resource and uh, we are running out of it and, and this is where and we can talk about anybody's interested later on and algae systems can be incorporated into the existing wastewater systems where we can and then this could be used to uh, provide energy for these wastewater uh, plants and other surrounding areas and uh, I'll be remiss because I have some colleagues over here where we are trying to work with is the oil production and we are trying to do pyrolysis, extraction of lipids, as well as, uh, um, uh, as, well as some uh, uh, high temperature, high pressure, uh, hydro, uh, thermal treatments and uh, to get the lipids out and then we're working with Heinz and his group, try to see if we can um, get them into, uh, and, uh, into the higher fuels, maybe uh, green diesel or uh, green jet fuels. And uh, so we do have in our program a lot of folks working. Um, you know, we have chemists, we have microbiologists, we have mechanical, chemical, industrial engineers which are doing this. Over here, this just shows you that we can extract the proteins, uh, free fatty acids which could be uh, converted into oils and um, so we can, I guess since I would like to thank our uh, sponsors in the Energy and Environmental Quality Office in uh, U.S. Air Force, and uh, they are the ones who have been funding this program, and uh, we are very thankful for their, their support. So thank you.